Hello and welcome to Dream Nation. I'm your host, Yulia, and I'm really excited for today's podcast with Steph Kuipman from The Daily Hunch. She runs a disruptive astrology platform, and you never hear those words together, but on this show you do. We get to talk about patterns, technology, and disruption. It's going to be really, really exciting, so I hope you enjoy it. And speaking of exciting, this platform is also brought to you by Fundreamer, a global crowdfunding platform for social impact. I'm one of the co-founders. And um, it's a way for people to come together and support women and diversity-led projects because there's no other platform doing it right now. We've been doing it for three years. We raised over $1.25 million with just a very lean team of three people. And we've helped fund over 250 projects all over the world. So please tell your friends we're a much better choice than Indiegogo, GoFundMe, and um, Kickstarter. Our deals are better. You get to save more money. And we also promote social impact. Our vision is to really revolutionize funding for all of humanity. So check it out. Tell your friends. Enjoy the show. Here, scoot in a little bit this way. (laughs) Awkwardly close podcast. Welcome to Dream Nation. My name is Yulia, and I'm sitting down today with Steph Kuifman, and she is the CEO and founder of The Daily Hunch, and it's a really great astrology platform that provides custom horoscopes by subscription directly to your email box. Mm -hmm. You can check it out at thedailyhunch.com on social media. And Steph popped out of the womb as a lover of stories and storytelling. And after studying journalism and literature in Boston University, she spent the next few years of her career doing odd jobs in writing, literally odd. She's written about everything ranging from customer relationship management software to power tools to sneeze reflexes, music criticism, even sex advice. Now she's launched her own project, The Daily Hunch, and she's writing about a topic that's held her fascination for well over a decade. It's what's written in the stars. It is. So I start off my podcast by asking all of my um, guests Mm -hmm. the same question, which is, what was your dream as a kid? If you want me to be perfectly honest... I wanted to be a wolf. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, but I think beyond that, I also I've also wanted to be a writer for the longest time. You know, like I, I was a voracious consumer of folk tales. You know, before I was able to read, I used to force everyone in my family to sit down and read through the same stack of Russian folk tales for me every night before I went to bed. And I wasn't able to read at the time, but I could tell if they skipped a line, and I would make them go back and do it. Um, you know, I, I used to write tons of stories when I was a kid. Um, I feel like my parents caught me one time, and they're like, "What? What are you doing?" And I was I was just transcribing an autobiography of George Washington line by line, and I said I was writing a book. So, <laughs> so I guess you can say that I've probably you know been pretty consistent. I think you have been. <laughs> Um, I would love to delve into a little bit of, uh, what, what was the, what was the part about being a wolf that appealed to you most? God, no one's ever like <laughs> forced me to think about that. Um, I like running around in a pack and just like, mm-hmm. I don't know, having a community that appeals to me. That's true. Yeah. I think I like that aspect of it. I think more than anything though, my fascination with wolves began also as a child when, um, I think my brother, my brother used to make things up about wolves to try to scare me, and I think I think that fear transformed into a sort of fascination for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love it. Like I'm supposed to be afraid of these beautiful, majestic creatures. But you wanted to become the beautiful, majestic. I wanted. To, <laughs> I wanted people. that power. <laughs> uh, you totally get it. I love it. <laughs> So how did you go from wanting to be a wolf, um, who read a lot, to getting into astrology? Um, It's hard for me to say when I first became interested in astrology. I feel like, you know, obviously my my affinity for kooky stuff goes way back. But I think... I think that I really started to delve more into it towards the end of high school. You know, I, I remember my friend had one of those, the birthday book. Are you familiar with the yes, birthday book? I probably I, showed I, it I love the birthday book. Yeah. I love the birthday uh, book. We used to just like sit and read the profiles for hours and just kind of like, you know, freak out about how accurate some of them were. And I think that was the first time that, um, because I, I, I grew up, you know, everyone grows up reading like teen magazine horoscopes in the back of the tabloid and it's whatever, you know, you read it for fun. But I think that was the first time that I realized that there was like something about it that kind of resonated with me. 
I think astrology is so polarizing, right? Mm -hmm. People either hate astrology or love astrology. Mm -hmm. But I'm really curious um, to the aspect that you bring to your platform, which is uh, looking for patterns. So I'd mm -hmm. love to talk about pattern recognition and, um, and basically why people don't really acknowledge the fact that astrology helps you recognize patterns in the universe and like why people just hate astrology or love it it's like you're either yeah. in either camp well I don't I don't blame people for hating on astrology because I think there's a lot of bad misinformation out there about it you know I think the way that it gets represented in popular culture is a very dumbed down and simplified version of it and I mean I think that if that's all I knew about it of course I would be like no this is like a crack of crap you know um, I think People just kind of think, oh, well, how can I be like the millions of other people born in the same month as me? Like, that's stupid. But they don't realize that there's a lot more to astrology than just your sun sign. You know, you have your entire birth chart. And, you know, even if like you and I are both a Taurus, for example, you could be, you, ha you could have your son at two degrees Taurus, I could have my son at 28 degrees Taurus, and we'd have a totally different experience. Which is like not even taking into account the fact that, you know, you have a rising sign, you have a moon sign, you have Mercury, Venus, Mars, all the other planets. And that creates this very complex cosmic, uh, I don't know if you would call it a footprint or just a paradigm. A cosmic dance, perhaps? Cosmic dance. It could be a dance. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Everything's a dance. I was, reading, yeah. um, I was reading How Music Works by David Byrne. He mm -hmm. talked about the symphony of the planets how like planets actually make music if you listen to them mm -hmm. and like NASA did recordings of like what Mars sounds like in different tonations and I'm just gonna sideline if I start talking about it so I'm gonna bring it back yeah to no actually um, patterns there's there's a there's a really great free resource I'm obviously not promoting my own site but astro.com um, you can go and look up a bunch of different types of charts for yourself and you could you could actually look up a musical recording of your chart Oh, wow. Yeah. Astro.com. Astro.com. That's cool. Yeah. You should have that on your site somehow. You guys should partner with them. That's for, that's for 2.0. <laughs> that's for 2.0. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so how does astrology help one recognize patterns? So, okay, one of the primary sort of principles that people sort of refer to when they talk about why astrology works, there's a hermetic principle. It's called as above, so below. The idea is that <laughs> I know it. I'm doing it right You're now. You're doing it right now. Yeah. yeah. The idea is that, you know, the macrocosm reflects the microcosm. And what I always say is that it's not so much that, like, Saturn is literally reaching into your life and creating all these personal problems for you. But, you know, humans have been studying the correlations between planets and people for thousands of years. And we've kind of figured out by now that, like, when Saturn and Mars are at a 90 degree angle, these types of things tend to happen. And that's what sort of forms the basis of the future predictions. Um, and, you know, going back to what you were saying, I think that there are certain pred pred predictable patterns that occur in our own lives and in the world at large. And the, I think the thing that's kind of cool about astrology is that when you really break it down and you get into the essence of it, I think the thing that's really rich and interesting about astrology is that it's so tied into the seasonal progressions that we experience here on Earth. So, like, you know, you have the beginning of the zodiac, which begins with the vernal equinox. It's the beginning of, like, a new cycle. It's the new life. And you kind of progress through that until, you know, you're at the omega point. Yeah, and that create patterns. Like, seasons create patterns and mm -hmm. everything else is cyclical. Yeah. So, how did you get the idea for the daily hunch? Truthfully... I was, um, my, my old roommate left behind a book. You may have heard of it. It's called The 4-Hour Workweek. I love it. I love Tim Ferriss. <laughs> Tim Ferriss is, like, one of the reasons I started the, this podcast. Well, I would... he's the reason why I started my business. So, hi, Tim Ferriss. Hi, Tim Ferriss. Thank you for being inspiring <laughs> and amazing. And please come on my podcast. So, I, I sort of read the book, and I was like, well, that's an interesting idea. You know, you create, you can set up a business to bring in, passive income that gives you more freedom to do the things you really want to do and so I started thinking I was like well what if I did something like that and I, I made a list of all the different types of I guess markets that I belong to and I got stuck on astrology I was like you know I feel like this just makes sense like I know about it I'm interested in it it's fun and I feel like it could work you know and so it's funny because when I initially started working on this project it wasn't something that I was doing because 
I wanted to do astrology and that was what I wanted to do with my life. I was doing it as a means to an end. But I think that in the process of creating this business, I've kind of really, um, it's been gratifying in a way that I didn't really expect it to be. And I really do feel like I'm sort of using my whatever you know I don't know how you, talent talent yeah yes. it's called the talent I feel like I feel like this is like something that I should be doing so what makes the daily hunch different from all the other astrology horoscope things out there glad you asked so there's definitely nothing super revolutionary about having a list of your transits delivered to you so there are there's a there's a ton of different websites online where you can go to you know look up your birth chart or get a list of like your transits for that month but you, I don't think that there's any other sites out there that deliver it to you on a subscription basis. Um, so what I would really focused on doing is creating a much nicer user experience, one that was more visually appealing and modern. And, um, you know, beyond that, I think it's just the writing style. You know, people go to certain astrologers because they like the way they bring, they break things down. So I think that if people enjoy following me on social media, they'll probably enjoy hearing what else I have to say about the specific things that are happening in their lives. Yeah, you have a great voice. I like it. Thank you. I like your writing style a lot. Um, did you know that Nancy Reagan had a personal astrologist at the I, White House? I did. <laughs> she used yeah. uh, Joan Quigley. Mm -hmm. Like, after the assassination, she just went on a, I guess, like, I don't know. She just tried to prevent, she just tried to keep him safe. So she consulted with her about when the Air Force One was going to land, when PR conferences were going to happen. I guess she was really involved in the White House, um, which is really surreal. Yeah. Um, someone, I remember someone telling me that uh, they used to plan, like if they had, if they had like things that they didn't want people to really notice or know about, they used to plan the press conferences for when there was a void moon so that uh, it would just kind of like never really like catch people's attention. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I mean, don't don't quote me on that. That's just <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> What's a void moon? Uh, so a void moon is when the moon has finished making all of its aspects when it's in a certain sign. So the moon is the fastest moving planet or planet, according to astrology. Um, and it, every time it's in a sign, it's going to make a bunch of aspects with the different planets in the solar system. And there's usually a period at the end of its stay in each sign when it's done making aspects and it's not going to do anything until it changes signs. And that's when it's void. And that's usually when it's like, don't do anything, just kick back and relax. Like, there's no point in, like, trying to make anything happen right now. Interesting. Yeah. So speaking of making things happen, you come from a journalism and literature and writing background, mm -hmm. and you don't have tech skills. Like, you don't know how mm -hmm. to code. You tinker with Photoshop, but you're not a coder. Nope. So... I'm really impressed that you were able to build a solid platform while working with coders. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the process? Like, what did you learn from building the platform? What was the hardest part of it? What was the easiest part? The easiest part was coming up with an idea for how I wanted it to work. The hardest part was um, meshing that with reality. <laughs> you know, I think, I think I was talking to you about that one time. I was like, well, it's like, you know, the interesting thing about working with technology is that you kind of wake up every morning with an email explaining to you why this thing that you thought was going to work a certain way can't work that way or like you have to do it differently um so I think for me that was kind of the most challenging part was just you know I think there are a lot of hiccups that flare up when you're dealing with technology um things don't always work the way you expect them to and sometimes when you fix one thing it creates a problem somewhere else so you know I think that was probably one of the most frustrating things about bringing this thing to fruition. So what advice do you have for other people who don't know how to code and want to build something? Hire good coders. <laughs> That's a really great yeah. advice, isn't it? <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't do any of the coding myself, obviously. Right, you know? hire great coders, yeah. build a good team, make yes. sure people know what they're doing. It's yeah. so true. And I mean, communication is a big part of that, too. Communication is huge. It's, it's a big deal. I mean, um, you know, you can't assume that the people who are sort of building this platform for you understand always understand exactly what you mean. Like I think you really need to be very deliberate and specific when you, you know, communicate your needs. And so that, I guess that was another one of the learning learning lessons that I learned during this whole thing. Well, that's where your communication skills come in. You're mm -hmm. a journalist by trade, and mm -hmm. having the gift of eloquent speech 
makes um, communicating and marketing a product a lot easier. And that's why I really, really love your product because you have a really great voice. And I really, I'm subscribed and I'm also an angel investor, full disclosure. I really love this product because it makes me really happy to just like get little tidbits about how my month is going to be. Mm -hmm. It's like getting a letter from a friend who knows you. Aww. It's a really great service. And Thank you. Um, I read a lot of other um, Horsco blogs from time to time. You know, sometimes you're having a crappy day and you're like, let me just log on and see what's happening. Or you're having a good day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just one little tiny way to try to see, like, control your universe and recognize patterns and see if, like, what's going on in your life. So, what advice do you have for people that don't write well aside from outsourcing? Find something you are good at and then play that up. Not everything has to be about writing, right? Right. You can capitalize on your strength no matter what it is. So um, so what is in the stars next for The Daily Hunch? Well, I recently launched just a couple of weeks ago. And I think now, obviously, the work's not done. I think the next big hurdle is just going to be marketing and building my customer base and getting the word out. So I have, I'm going to be looking into ways to get myself out there, maybe partner with some bigger brands, do some promotions. I wrote a astrological pickup lines. Can you give me a few? Like tell yeah. me a few? Yeah. Um, here, let me, let me, let me, let me get my card for you right now. Oh my God. You have a card. Yeah, I love it. I do. Um, so which one do you want to hear? Oh, any of them. Like, tell me, tell me. So, okay. Taurus, are you a deregulated New York City apartment? Because I'm about to spend half my paycheck on you. <laughs> That's great. I like the one I wrote for Pisces. Are you ready? Mm hmm Are you an Ikea store? Because I can already feel myself getting lost inside you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are great. Wait, yeah. Virgo, I'm not perfect, but I have a feeling my flaws aren't the only thing you'll be laying bare tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them are NSFW. Oh, these are so great. Wait, Gemini, I was feeling drained until I connected with you, but now I get why they call it a mobile hotspot. <laughs> oh my god, I yeah. love this. That's great. This is great. Okay, so aside from running an astrology app and freelancing as a journalist, mm -hmm. you also are a big dancer. You do a lot of Lindy Hop and a mm -hmm. lot of swing, and you do competitive dancing, which I think is fascinating. I did like one or two competitions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a kid, you did a lot of competitive. That's true, I did. Yeah. You did a lot of competitive dancing. Yeah. And um, my question is, how do you, how do you tie all those together? How do they influence each other? Oh man, well, I think I think the connection between writing and astrology is pretty obvious, right? Because I'm obviously using those skills to communicate things to people. Um, to me, I think dancing is just another form of expression. It's a form of creativity, but it's a little bit more ineffable. And it's also movement, like the stars. The stars are moving together, That right? is true. I just realized that. Yeah. Wow. So what's your dream as an adult? I would like to continue to weave astrology and writing and dancing into my day-to-day -day existence. It would be really cool uh, to have this thing really take off and be a big presence in the astrology world. I would love to be able to also work on my journalism, maybe do my own projects, like write my own books. And I would like to be dancing and traveling all over the world. That's kind of my sweet spot. Steph, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank um, you. Please tell everybody where they can check out The Daily Hunch again. Uh, so it's thedailyhunch.com, and I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as The Daily Hunch. Super. Thank you so much. And uh, let's hang out again soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning into the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Dream Nation Love. It's not Dream Nation Podcast. It's Dream Nation Love because I think my single mission in life is to teach people how to love a little bit more. And together we can save the world. So it's Dream Nation Love. Share it with your friends. Have a great day and go out and make the world a better place.